Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Behind the Visual with Mark Hansen. This one, however, does not have any video. Uh, we have a few coming up here soon uh, for various reasons that do not have video, but still some great audio. I think um, some great episodes you guys will still like. So check it out. Um, hopefully we'll be getting back, or I know we'll be getting back to some more uh, video podcast here pretty soon but um we have at least a couple coming up here in the next little bit that are not gonna have video but check it out listen to this one and i hope you enjoy it all right so welcome to another edition of Behind the Visual, a podcast where I interview the people responsible for creating, putting together, and producing all the videos and images you see out in your world every day. I'm your host, lifestyle and advertising photographer, Mark Hansen. Today, my guest is Eric Morley, the co-founder and chief operating officer of Blue Sea, a creative marketing agency with specializations in brand strategy and development, as well as brand activation and ongoing marketing strategy. You can see their work at bluecusa.com. So go check them out. All right, Eric, thank you so much, dude, for doing this. I appreciate it. I know we were supposed to do this in person, and uh, this whole coronavirus thing has completely screwed all of that on the travel. And, uh, but thanks for agreeing to do it anyway. Yeah, super bummed, Mark. I was really hoping to spend a little time in person, but I think this is the next best thing. So uh, appreciate you having me on your show and look forward to chatting it up with you. Yeah, man, absolutely. So why don't you tell me a little bit about how you got started from like when you were younger to the point where you got into this whole deal to where you ended up, you know, being the co-founder of Blue Sea. How did all that come about? So I, I think like, kind of my growing up phase is that, you know, I came from a print and direct mail family. Uh, my father was in printing. He worked for the newspapers. Uh, and so I spent a lot of time going to the press plants with him. Oh, um, wow. I always, I always remember every Thursday I'd drive up with him and to go pick up his check, we'd walk across the street to thrifty. I'd get my two scoops of ice cream. For a dime. <laughs> and uh, then we walked through the, the press plant and he'd smell that ink and so forth. So I kind of grew up with, that on the media side and then also the printing side my mother was in direct mail she did all the direct mail for car dealerships and so um and a lot was when you know cars were you know three to four years old people were trying to look for that new car so she did all the reminder postcards for that so it was actually kind of like the pre-lease and the pre you know pre-program of uh, oh yeah purchase. So that's, you know, so she did that from her home and then she also worked in a lot of the dealerships and coordinated that. So I kind of got the best of both worlds. My sister is in accounting. We actually think she was adopted, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because you always look and it's kind of funny because I've been listening to your podcast since the beginning and oh, thank you, man. I, I've been, yeah, is, um, yeah, I'm the one that's giving that four thumbs up in each time. So well, I appreciate um, that. No worries. <laughs> I'll take whatever yeah. I can get right now. So that's exactly. wonderful. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I got a six pack of Corona beer I can send you if you want. Sweet. Now. Absolutely. But, <laughs> but 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 it's um and, and my side is it's like I've always believed in brands and I've always believed in the difference between a brand that makes a um an effort to position themselves and create a message and create a story and create an ethos about them and brands that don't and I've I, kind of since I was even in high school I kind of always looked at that and I really wanted to focus on you know like being something in that space um, after high school I uh, started a retail store with a couple of friends that burnt down to the ground literally in a couple of years and then oh. I just I, I went home and I just basically said you know what I you just have to focus on something. I, I still remember it to the day is I remember I was in my room really into kind of going into, you know, a, a depression after building a retail store and losing it. And, and what were um, you guys, what were you selling? So, so basically what it was is that in the apparel industry in Orange County is the whole punk rock music scene was like blowing up. Okay, and so yeah. we, we had a lot of access to a lot of interesting opportunities and a high school friend of myself, 
high school friend and myself started the store in Costa Mesa. We paid a whole whopping 200 bucks a month and wow. we were killing, we were killing it. <laughs> we had a lot of great opportunity through it and built the retail store. Um, I think we were doing probably about a thousand bucks a day. And then our profit margins were like close to like 65, 70%, which was awesome. Wow. That's and, great. And it worked out good. Um, but retail is really not my thing. Building brands is. And so I, I just remember, so we had a falling out and they bought me out. And um, whenever you have three partners at a business, it's brutal. And oh, so imagine. when it's two, when it's two partners, it works fine. But when you have three, it's a whole different world. And so um, they bought me out. And so I had a chunk of money and, um, and I'm going, what, do I do with this? It's like, okay, well, I can go travel. I can go buy a really cool car or I can maybe try to do something for the future. So I just remember going home and I'm like, I remember looking down at my bedspread that my mom made me. It was a purple one with like these funky little, like, I, I kind of remember it as like, you know, those sprinkles on donuts, those colorful pastel yeah, sprinkles yeah, yeah. on donuts. I kind of remember it had something like that on it. And I go, what am I going to do? And, um, so I said, you know what? Was this in the eighties? This was in the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basing it's, that on the bedspread <laughs> and the mom making it, you know, buy that yeah. Nike and yes. stuff like that. Sure. And so I, I was taking a couple classes at a junior college at that point, just still trying to figure out what I was going to do. And, um, I took a lot of accounting classes, but then I took a left field advertising class and I go, this advertising class is actually pretty fun. And so at that point in time, I just connected. I said, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to do it. So packed everything up, went to San Diego, got my business degree, uh, went to an advertising academy and graduated from both those, came back to Orange County, worked for a small firm, decided that the small firm route wasn't my thing. So I went to a very large firm, which is kind of a multi-state that worked out good. And then I had and then I had an opportunity to work for a startup agency with a lot of potential. So I sent my resume in and um, I got the job. And the best part is it was like three miles away from my house, which is oh, you know, my, nice. my dream. And oh, yeah. then it, it grew up to about 150 employees. And then the, it was about, I think it was like six or seven years later, the two owners just had a, a financial falling out and, I left with one of the owners. We went ahead and started an agency in Fullerton. Um, it was his agency. I just worked there in the really? old ice house, 1929 ice house. And really, you know, and so it was, it was a cool experience. And something but, you yeah. think about is, I mean, the place was beaten down. He borrowed all this money, about a million bucks to actually reconstruct the whole thing to create an agency on it. And I was kind of sitting back going, God, this, you're spending way too much money and time on this versus creating a business. So at that right. point I was just like, I had one child at the time and another child on the way. And I needed to really kind of like, think of like, okay, how am I going to keep this business afloat while he's building this thing? So I just focused on strictly new business. And so, um, you know, I just, I brought, I brought my first client I brought in was Honda motor cars, which was very cool. So how we do you do that, when, or especially with a client that big and you guys are starting up a new you know, agency? I, funny story is um, I truly believe new business is about there, there's no traditional way of getting new business. It's basically it's relationships. And yeah. I went to I went to a, a friend's baby shower and one of the guys there was the marketing guy at Honda and he had a child the same, same age as ours. And. Uh, we just kind of hit it off and start doing work for him and the rest is history. And it's, it's interesting because I actually had that client for, well, I, we still do, but I had that client contact for 22 years oh, and, wow. and then he left, he went to another company. And yeah. so uh, I don't work with him, but we still work with other people in Honda now, which is great. Well, that's good. Cause in my experience, when I lose my contact at any place and they, they go off somewhere else where they just quit, I lose the client. Yeah. yeah You're right. Well, it's tough because he actually went to another company and their whole primary focus is in-house, build it in-house, oh, don't yeah. outsource it. So it's like, uh, well, you know what? His name is Mark too. So it's, uh, it's actually, it's, uh, don't have a chance to work with him as much as we wish we would have. So, you know, good stuff. Yeah. Well, that's incredible, man. Yeah. yeah so, so, 
So yeah, keep going. So 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 from there, I just I, I uh, the agency, it, it was kind of more of a friends and family uh, agency. It's like he would hire people that were like friends of his. And I was like, okay, what do you want to be? Uh, okay, you do production. You can be a production manager. Okay, what? You know how to <laughs> you know how to make phone calls. Okay, you can be an account exec. I was like, it's like, oh, okay, you know how to read a data chart. Okay, you're the data guy. And so um, at that point, it was. It was a beautiful concept. It was a beautiful time. It was it was the time when you'd spend twenty four hours straight working the agency, sleeping on the floor, doing the whole thing. And oh, um, wow. to the to this day, I think it was one of the most memorable agency experiences of my life. Um, and then, but at that point is in the latter part is everyone kind of raced to the bank on payday on the first and 15th and see whose checks would cash. Oh, and, <laughs> yeah. And so it, it actually got, it got really miserable and, you know, I, I'm trying to keep, you know, my wife was at a point where she, it, her, her company was in transition a lot. And so, and she really wanted to stay home with the kids. And so I really kind of had to figure it out. So I went to go work for um, a friend of mine's design firm and just sales. And it was a small design firm. And the whole concept was is to freelance everything out, unbeknownst to me when I got there. Oh, really? And um, so I, w- I would really work really hard bringing new accounts in, only to find out that the company can't do it. So, but I had mm. this one freelancer, and he was just amazing. And um, and it's funny because I'd get his and I'd get his faxes of his work all the time. And his <laughs> name is, yeah, and I'd check him out, and they'd yeah. actually be funny, and it's like. And of course, he would scribble stuff, and it's like, "Hey, Eric, you should hire me. All your other work sucks." And it's like, okay, great, thanks. <laughs> and so, wow, that's ballsy. I well, like beyond, that. Yeah. Beyond ballsy, and you know what? He and when I started working with him, and you know, things just clicked really well. His name's Jeff Bentley, and to this day, he's my business partner now. And so we decided to oh, like, wow. he walked by my desk, and it's like, "Hey, you ready to cut out of this gig? Let's uh, let's go start an agency. Let's let's do our own thing." I was like, "Okay." You know, so it, 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 it took me about two months of, you know, mental acceptance, right? Just cut the cord and went for it. And to wow. this day, we're still going. So, so how long have you guys been in business? So we started in his living room in March 12th, 1998. And so wow. the first year was kind of a screw around year. And then we actually got an office and kind of got real. And, um, and so the next year was uh, kind of 1999, 2000, in that whole era there. Yeah. And so our first client was um, Fremont Street Experience in Las Vegas, which was the 12 casinos. Oh, and we wow. talk about we talk about new business. How do you get new business? It's like, well, it was my old roommate's girlfriend. They moved to Las Vegas. She was a receptionist there, and they hated their agency. So she called me and said, "Hey." Uh, we're looking for an advertising agency. Do you, uh, do you still do that advertising thing? It's like, okay. So that was our first client. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It is all about relationships. I have to say I have shot all kinds of stuff because art directors, creative directors like me, you know, they want me to shoot food. I'm like, yeah, I do not want to shoot food. I've heard that in your last pot. Well, that's how you yeah. and I met, you know, it's just like, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a relationship and I've always admired your work and, Thank you know, you. Always ch- checking out your Instagram and your web and all of that. And I'm going, uh, you know what? It's, uh, that's, that's how relationships start. And, yeah. and I, I think, think it's so. like, there is no silver bullet. Right. Yeah. I know all these people keep talking about, and I've, it's really hit me lately as you yeah. hear all these people talking about, especially photo reps and all, they're going, Oh, well, the way you got, you got to put out so many email blasts and you got to put out so many printed uh, promo pieces and that's how you're going to get in. I'm, like, I'm sure that helps some, but from my experience, it all comes down yeah. to getting in front of somebody, meeting them, them liking your work, first of all, and then liking you and knowing that they can put up with you for, you know, two, three, yeah. four, five days, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is, is that your industry and my industry has changed so much. Oh, yeah. Everything we're doing is, has to be relative fresh and exciting and has to be kind of that, you know, that next big thing, as well as staying core to the realities of our business of, 
you know, creating brands and creating stories and creating messaging that connects with the customers. Yeah, tell me a little bit about, I know but, you guys work with like Monster Energy, Toyota, what Acura, yeah. JBL, those, I mean, you guys work some big agencies and then you've got this, um, was the brand power deal? Yeah. Do you, does, does that work with those agencies or did that come in and then after you started working with those guys, you've figured out, hey, here's how we could help other people and how so, did that come together? Here, here, well, here's, here's kind of how, I mean, the brands that we work with are ones that seek really inspirational, creative storytelling content, truly connect it from a brand roadmap right through a marketing roadmap. And so we've always done from a, a, a top end tactical approach, starting with a strategy. But then what happens is, is that we've had a lot of clients in the last year and a half is they were, they were coming to us and it's like, well, how about if we do this animated 3D thing that was like, why are you doing that? They don't know why they're doing that, but they know they need to do something. And so our whole agency, even since the beginning, it's always been based upon a strategy first DNA is we always focus on the strategy first. If the client just wants something, it's like a, it's a, a tactic and we don't focus on strategy, we don't do it. And the strategy always has to support the tactic on it. Right. And so a lot of our clients were coming to us and saying, we, we know we need to do something, we know we need to launch this, but we also need to make sure that um, it's on strategy, message, message is clear, it's the positioning, it's got our, everything's tied into the whole aspect of each and everything on it. And so um, super important is they actually kind of created this whole initiative for us. And so we created this program called Brand Power, and basically it's our brand strategy strategic process. And so we take them through this, it, this process that goes from step to step to step. You know, the first part is obviously having this very strong discovery session. And then we go into really getting deep into what the, from that discovery, what that architecture is. And Do you find that sometimes these companies think they're one thing and they're really something different, at least in their heads? Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you, you know what? It's to, to your point, absolutely. And so what happens is, is we get to the whole process on it and they actually start to say, oh, great, I get it now. I, I understand who we are. Um, and then what they do is they refer back to all of the documentation for each and every aspect of both internal and external communications. So I know that it's pretty deep on a Sunday morning at <laughs> 30 in the morning, but um, the, the, whole, the whole program, the whole brand power program is basically our unique differentiation of the marketplace. Well, I think this is what's needed. I mean, I think a lot of companies, like we just said, don't really realize what they are or what kind of company they are. And they need somebody to come in that's going to really dig deep into the company and uh -huh. kind of help them, help them figure it out. Because I've seen so many, you know, they're just kind of all over the place. Sure. And even my um, a friend of mine had a company and they were doing kind of a rebranding. And they've noticed that, everybody isn't necessarily on board or they don't realize that they don't think about it. So they have like, here's our color, here's our, our logo. Sure. And this is, this needs to go on everything. And then they'll find somebody will send out something that's a different color or that they will tweak the logo to fit whatever right. they want to. And they're like, you can't do that. And I think it's nice by somebody like you guys come in and explain to these two people like, Hey, here's how it has to be done. Right. And, and it's the, the, brand, the brand really isn't the logo and the brand is not the colors is the, the brand is, I think the best way to explain it is, is what people think your company is when you leave the room. And yeah. it's, it's that whole, it's that whole message. It's, I mean, even, even your photography is that I, I, I look at the brands that you work with and you, you capture that story in a unique message and it resonates with you. And so that's, that's an element of, building the brand on it. And it's kind of funny because I was thinking about this the other day is that really a brand brand strategy is that you want to be better than your competition. And it's, it's, yes. it's interesting is that 
when we work with clients right up front is we, we say, it's like, well, who's your competition? And they kind of look at us like this blank stare and they, it, it's a really drop. It's like, well, then they say, Oh, you should know your, you should know our competition. You didn't do all your research. And it's uh-huh. like, well, yeah. And I say, okay, let me show you who your competition is, but first tell me who your competition is. And so we have a research department and they'll, they'll go ahead and pull all the competition before our pitches and so forth. And, um, and so um, they'll try to think it's like, okay, let me show you who we think. And please just help me out if I'm wrong on any of this, but um, I, I think we're pretty close. And so we'll go ahead and present it on a screen and say, okay, this is your competition here. Here's where they fall within the grid. Here's the other competition. Here's where they fall within your X, Y grid. Okay, here's here. And they're like, it's like, Ooh, I didn't know they did that. I didn't know they did that. I didn't. Wow. Well, I didn't know that. Then we get into the tougher part is like, okay, let's talk. Let's just have a little fun here is let's talk about your customer profiles. Who are your customers? Um, oh, okay. They're, and it's, you have that, you have that three second dramatic pause again Uh and they try to get to us like okay let okay now now that we're kind of on the same page here is that we really need to establish who your competition is and we also need to establish who your customers are is let us show you our process and really building bringing this out of who your customers are and so we do these customer profiles is who they are what they do how they how they fall within our system you know, what kind of media that they look at, how, what, what they really need, what kind of position they are in the company and so forth. And so we really focus on that. But um, those are the two aspects that are really interesting in the whole brand power process. And it's like the, it's kind of the aha moment. And why is that so important for you as, you know, an amazing content producer is that I can actually show these to you and you go, okay, great. I got it. Versus yes. like, okay, try, trying to find your way in the dark. Yeah, and I've, I mean, I have clients who I think could definitely use you guys because there are times where, you know, they'll look at my my work and they go, this is what we want. This is the feel we're looking for. This is, you know, this whole caught in the moment, whatever. Yeah. Fun, happy, just normal lifestyle, fashion, whatever kind of look. But we want to look like you just caught these people just doing their thing. And then you actually get on set and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. no, 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 no. We got to, this is, you know, that's too wrinkled or this doesn't look the way we need it to. And then everything all of a sudden goes from what they thought they wanted to a completely different, a different look. And I used to get excited about that. I was like, all right, cool. I get to actually shoot some cool stuff and we get to have fun with this. And then, and now I know that I don't expect it. I expect to get on set and everything gets turned into almost like mannequins, you know, who are trying to look like they're, they're normal, but they're not. So it's, I think a lot of companies could use you guys coming in like, Hey, here's your competition. Cause some of these, I'll uh, look oh. at who their competition is. I'm like your competition is shooting what you tell me you want. Yeah. But you guys won't shoot it because you're afraid you I guess your clients aren't going to buy it if we don't shoot it the way you've been shooting it. Right. And so actually I'm going to, I'm going to email you one of our most recent ones. Actually, are you by your computer right now? Um, are you by, that was a kind of crazy question. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, one second yeah. but it's uh maybe i'm taking this conversation into a whole different direction here but uh well, that's all right we can go wherever yeah wherever yeah i just got uh brand power thing yeah so that actually i'm gonna send you another thing here it's like okay. uh, are you on mac or pc i am on mac right now i have one of each <laughs> okay. All right. You're on it. Yeah. Eh, you know what? It's too big a file. I'm going to have to send it separately okay. to you at a later okay. date. But um, you know, I think the 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 whole the whole idea is is that is putting the brand together and all the brand pieces together before it goes into execution. And it's it's so important. And you know, the other thing we've found is a lot of when we start interacting with clients initially is they really need help in defining why they're doing what they're doing in the first place. And we also have to really come to an understanding is, is that a client's job is so fragmented nowadays is it used to be as like a brand manager was responsible for this, 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 and this, then they go home and live a nice, crazy, healthy life. 
Right. Uh, nowadays, it's that it's just they go home and live a crazy life because they go home and they have to start researching and learning and they're getting hit up by every shiny object possible of how to be better. But one thing we've really talked about is like what, you know, we always talk about like kind of the three questions is um, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this in the first place? Right. You know, some, yeah. some will say it's like re- we want refresh and repositioning. We want to define the new brand architecture. We want to develop new creative expression. Uh, we want to pre- reposition for new markets. Um, we've actually had this quite often as branding for an acquisition lately is because what happens is, is that they want to put their company on the block and uh, instead of a two X, they want to go to a four X, five X or six X. Right. Which we had, we wow. actually did. We did one and went for a 10 X, which is awesome. Really? I, I got I got zero out of it, but they got right. But still, that's they got pretty amazing. Jets and houses and islands. And stuff, <laughs> so they're happy. Oh, that's um, good. But ultimately, it's like to clarify the company purpose and really kind of understanding. And so that's always been important. And so, yeah. um, wow, man! I mean, is, is there one company that just sticks out as the most fun for you with this, or? One all of them. Just think, yeah. You know, all of them. All, and let me tell you why, because you, you're taking, you're taking, it's a collaboration process. First and foremost, it's not just like blue sea saying, okay, we're going to define, we're going to build, we're going to refresh, we're going to reposition, we're going to launch it. It's like, okay, no, we're going to work with you, gather your input and have this discovery session. And the whole discovery session is really interesting is that um, we try to take ourselves out of the process as much as possible. And so what we do is we have the discovery session, we do the interviews, we, we go ahead and have them transcribed and document it. Our documentation company highlights any duplications of messaging on it so we can actually see it. And then what we do is if we're interviewing five people is we push it through um, a, a cloud software on it. And basically what it will do is it will itemize all the big picture thoughts, low picture thoughts, mid picture thoughts, and what's relative. So we'll take all those five, those five people's, if, if we're talking about mission, we'll take yeah. all those five people's messaging on it. And then we'll separate each one. It's like, Hey, John said this, and these are the most important words to him. Jill said this, John's wife said this, not saying John's wife's going to say anything, right, but right. but the point, and then what we do is we say, okay, you guys have five different opinions. And it's like, then you just kind of have this blank stare, but let us help you out through this whole process. So now what we do is we take all of their responses to the questions and then we do the cloud overview again. And so we can actually define what is the key messages that they're getting across. And so we get a data sheet back on it, which will actually show the, the top, 50 messages that come out of it. So how, so when you finish with one of these companies, when you you do this whole thing, you finish the whole deal Mm -hmm. and you leave them. I was talking to um, Jamie Boyder over at Bolt and they were talking about how he did um, the Cobalt thing for Lowe's Mm -hmm. and they left it in Lowe's hands. And a year, year and a half later, Lowe's was calling them back going, Hey, this is going off the rails. And because they had started taking that cobalt and putting it into or the cobalt branding and putting it into everything they had. And, he, and it was just completely sales were starting to drop. Nothing was going. He had to go back over. I guess the whole team had to go back over and help them get it back together. What do you guys do or do you do anything to help keep them on track later? So when you guys step out of the picture somewhat or completely that they don't completely go off the rails like that. Uh, well, have you like, got to stay with them? Do, do you have like a magic eye in our office and kind of like <laughs> what we're doing? Is that it? no, actually, I it's, wish like, I did. It, it's, it's a really good question is, um, so what we do is when we go through this process is super important is we do the discovery, the brand architecture, the brand expression. And then when you come into it, you get involved in the creative execution side on it. So you're already seeing the details of what it is. You're seeing all the documents on it. You're seeing the deliverables on it. You create all the photography and all the assets for us. And then we go into a brand roadmap is how are we going to take all of that, what all that message and transition it for the new world or the the new brand. 
And so, you know, it, it's going to be obviously it's like web, social, uh, internal, external messaging, HR, what, whatever that whole package is. And so we do this brand roadmap. And then from the brand roadmap, then we go into a marketing roadmap. And so we create the marketing roadmap where we actually manage the whole process for the client. So they're more focused on doing the day to day, but they're not just saying, okay, we have this, we just need this tactic here as we actually get into the whole, you know, marketing roadmap of it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Which I think is good. So kind of like, so say a company comes to us, I'll just kind of simplify the message because it is yeah. it's so complicated and it's like, I mean, we're, we're going into this a half hour right now and I probably have like jumped all over the world on it because it's such a, it's something that we're super proud of. And so it, it's, it's something that actually changes a company for the better. Yeah. It, I find it very interesting. So yeah. I'm, I'm all into it. Yeah. So say, say you come to us, you, you have your photography business. So we do a whole, your whole discovery on it. We figure out who you are, what you're about, who your customers are, who your competition, and where you really fit, kind of like what that X factor is. You right. know, um, Mark Hansen is this, 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 and he is so different because he does this. Okay, then we create the brand architecture of, you know, the, the mission, the values, the pillars, what our, our mantra is, what our manifesto is. We craft this new story for you, and then we create the brand expression of, you know, how, how are we going to um, present you in digital, in printed, in events, in, you know, whatever, whatever space that you communicate your message in. Right. And then the creative, ex- we execute that towards, okay, what do we need to do? It's like, okay, we need to do this brand video. We need to do this. 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 And then what we do is we say, hey, Mark, here is your brand roadmap. Here's the 12 things you need to do to get you to where your brand needs to go. Because ultimately at the end of the day, it's a brand strategy is taking you from where you're at right now to where you want to go. Right. And, and then, so now we created your brand roadmap. And, we, and so your brand is like 100% totally put together, you know, both internal and external are in an alignment. Now your messaging is in alignment. And now we're going to say, okay, okay, Mark, we're going to focus on, these are your target markets. These are your target uh, profile customers. Here's your competition on here. What we need to do is we need to get you business now. And so we go through the marketing roadmap and here's the 10 things we're going to do. And so, you know, like for this, this is going to, this is going to take us 30 days to produce. And then what it's going to do is it's going to market yourself out there for the year. And we're going to change the content up and the messaging as it goes on. And that's kind of how it works. Have you guys, I mean, when it comes down to, I guess, dividing up between stills and video, which do you, are you leaning more towards lately? Has it been more video recently or is it a combination of the two or does it just depend on the client? It's to me, it's, it's the combination of the two. Yeah. It's, it's the, you have to deliver, you have to deliver the message in the way your customers want it. And, right. and it's really, it's that, um, we just did this amazing program for Coca-Cola and we, we actually do the execution side on a month to month basis on it. And basically what it was is, is that they Coca-Cola is a, they, they don't produce their own product is they have bottlers that produce the product for them. And so one of their biggest bottlers is, is has 19 different marketing units. And so the wow. challenge we had is like, Hey, how do we get each of these marketing units to reach these goals for Coca-Cola in order to be the more of the cum of the whole thing? And so we call we created this thing called the execution championships. It's almost like the super, it's almost like the NFL standings program where what we do is we compete one marketing unit against one marketing unit on a monthly basis. And each of them have their, um, there's like a sunset league. There is a, um, there's a daytime league. There's a, a weekend league. We basically have four leagues and they compete for the championship. And each, each month is the winner actually wins money for to do whatever they want to do with it. And then at the end of the year, they're going to have this, they're going to have the champion of it, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And, so, and so what happens is, is now we've created the brand. 
um, every marketing unit has their own identity, has their own naming, has their own structure, has their own messaging for it, has their own tagline, has their own, they're almost like set up like a sports team. And then uh, what happens is, is that every month is we'll communicate um, who the winners are, who the losers are, we'll create the content behind it, we'll push it out to them in several different aspects and keep them pumped up about it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. So that started through our brand power process of discovery, first of all, creating the brand architecture, creating the brand expression to reach our objective in the end is to make sure they reach their goals because um, you know what? The beverage world is a highly competitive world. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I always thought at this point, and I'm probably totally wrong, but that you know you're always right mark a, so you're yeah. always right <laughs> all right well i'll tell you what let's tell everybody that tell my wife and kids that oh and, uh, yeah <laughs> okay kind of like that would be like, wonderful i'm as scared of my wife but i'm not as scared of yours put her on the phone no yeah exactly yeah, yeah i think that's about it i've always thought that like at this point coke is such a huge company that they're basically just putting out advertisement and branding messages just yeah. so you don't completely forget them. But that if they stopped, that would be a quite a while before they yeah. were really hurting. No, but I, not at all. I mean, it's just like you, you look at the quarterlies and you listen to them is that, you know, like they just launched aha, which is a sparkling um, flavored water program. Okay. Uh, carbonated flavored water program and you know they got a, that's called innovation and yeah. so this program that we work on is it hack it focus focuses on achieving each of the marketing units the bottlers marketing units um, to reach innovation on shelf and there's two other aspects that I really can't tell tell you about yeah. but what happens is is that anytime a coca-cola product is purchased it, it adds to this data mix to say if they've achieved their goal in that particular retail location. But like okay. innovation is every month is we have a new product they launch. So like the, for, for example, this month is aha, their whole um, their sparkling water program. And so what we have to do is it's innovation and it's on shelf space is that wow. that's two of the four. And if one marketing unit gets a, a 90% on it and another marketing unit gets a 92% on it and they're competing head to head on it. The 92% wins that month and they win the money for their particular marketing unit to throw a party at the end of the year. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. yeah so, on our, cool. so, but to your point and kind of going back to what is it's like, okay, we have to do it in video. We have to do it in photography. We have to do it in customer generated content because we want, their content to serve it back up. It has to be written. It has to be an email. It has to be in text. It has to be in, you know, in a, um, a Facebook group uh, program. It's got to be um, in face events. Uh, it has to be in store or on location POS launch materials and stuff like that. So you said text. Are you guys doing more of that, sending things out by text now? Is that becoming a it, bigger piece? No, it's when it's relative. It's okay. when it's when it's relative and when, when people see value in getting that text, I believe in doing that, but it's like for us to send out, you know, a hundred thousand texts to say, Hey, 25 cents off this. And that, that's not what we do. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cause I was wondering, I've, occasionally I get some text for stuff and I've noticed it's, it's becoming more of a thing. It seems like yeah. Yeah. Used to, I got a thing the other day for something. I didn't even know I'd signed up for it. It was, I don't even know how they got me. It was for some photography workshop. I was like, I have no interest in this at all. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, the guy was like, it's going to start in, in an hour. Then I got another one. It's going to start in five minutes. I was like, I don't even know what this is or how you got my number. Oh, did, sure. you get the sure. did you get the text for the Blue Sea Pizza Party last week then? I, I didn't. What's going oh, on with that? No. Yeah. no I, messed so, up. I, I see how much you care now. There you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure you get on the list. <laughs> well, thank you. I love it. Uh, oh, good times. Well, yeah, hell, I'm, I'm, I braved the coronavirus to go out there and have the, uh, for the Blue Sea Pizza Party. There you go. Uh, yeah, man. I know. It's right. going to be interesting. So I, yeah, well, yeah. God. I, I had a friend of mine just came back from New York and a stylist friend, and she 
took a shot of her on her on the plane coming back from New York, and there was nobody. Like, she was about midway on the plane, um, probably a row or two behind the exit rows, and there was nobody behind her. Mm. Yeah, I mean the whole plane. I mean half the plane was empty. Do you question how this is going to affect your business? Yeah, yeah. yeah I got. I have a. So do I. Um, I have a big shoot coming up in April. It's uh-huh. mid mid late April, and it's out of town. And I'm worried about are they going to cancel this thing? Are they going to you know they going to let it ride or whatever? So far, you know, it's everything's still go. Uh-huh. I haven't had anything cancel yet, um, but I don't have you know nothing's been big. You know, so right. it's not like huge crews or we're having to go you know fly mm-hmm. overseas or any place like that. So. But yeah, I wonder what's going to happen with it. My wife just saw something. Uh, she sent it to me. There's a um, a psychic. Well, I don't even know. I can't remember what her name is. Sylvia Brown. That's who it uh-huh. was. So she sent it to me. Who evidently wrote a book and predicted this whole thing. You know what? I heard this thing. One of my kids told me this yesterday. And it's like, no, you got to be joking. And it's like, you're telling me this. I actually heard it somewhere else last night. It's like, oh, great. You know? Yeah, she said she predicted it and that was going to go disappear just like that you know just all of a sudden it was just going to go away Good. and then 10 years from now it would come back again for a little bit and then disappear again and never come back again so i hope it's right i hope she's right yeah. i think what i think something what's over with the i think the thing is is that each time something like this comes around is they they understand the process to get rid of it and yeah. they kill the virus and then kind of get back to normal for a little while and something happens and you know uh, it's yeah. it's a, it's this this is i've never seen anything like this in my lifetime me either People let's, just, let's get let's get let's get out of the doom and gloom it's too easy to go back that yeah, yeah let's, go, I, let's go to positive I, yeah, stuff so tell me about motorcycles man let's uh, talk motorcycle. about that for a minute oh, so um kind of rain have? i have i have a triumph right now i actually got i've been oh. kind of i've been kind of scaling back on my motorcycles. I got rid of my dirt bike. I got rid of my flat tracker and I've got rid of my other stuff. And in our office, we've got obviously, uh, you know, motorcycles there. We just kind of like, you know, uh, you know, we have them in the back and people work on them just an ongoing basis. And so we've got an old 72 bull taco, which we actually use a lot in our content shoots for clients because they just think it's cool. Yeah, um, the the last thing, last thing we did was a video shoot for an Australian energy drink called mother energy, which is owned by Coca-Cola. And, uh, we actually did it local and it was supposed to be kind of deemed like it was in Australia. And so we used it for that. So, you know, oh. still need to clean it up for that. So, but yeah, we kind of got a mixture and, you know, we've always been involved in, um, both myself and my business partner, Jeff Bentley is, he's a, he's a big car guy and he's, he's, I call him the Craigslist hunter. Is he's, he basically will go to Craigslist and find like the most beat up car ever for the cheapest price possible. And he'll bring it back to life. So he tries to stay around a thousand bucks, 1200 bucks, 1500 bucks. And then he, yeah. he'll, he'll buy these things from like you know, the seventies and um, he'll, they're, they're pretty cool. So if you just you even look up like Jeff Bentley on YouTube, you can actually see one of the videos that the uh, Orange County ad club did on one of his cars. Uh, does he back. keep these things or does he sell them? He keeps them and he sells them. Um, yeah, I have a friend he, of mine does something very similar, but he keeps them all. I think yeah. he's got like 15 cars or something at this point. Is Jeff is a, he's a, he's a true craftsman. He's a really like, um, he's, you have, you have kind of like three levels of people. It's like you have the employees that, you know, kind of the nine to fivers, nine to sixers, whatever. Then right. you're actually four. Then you have the employees that really, really care and have a true passion for the business and you know they do their personal projects and they really like our like go to the trade shows and stay very involved then you got owners that are there just to push sales through then you have owners that are just that are there because they 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 believe in the industry and they have the love and the passion for the industry and jeff's the kind of guy you know as as well as me but jeff's like he's really like very he's passionate about design he's passionate about branding he's passionate about content and he's working hands on hands on like creating all this with his team it's not like he's just like pushing over it's like okay here you go just go for it and so he has the passion on design but he also has the passion on car building too where he just takes these cars and he, he, he does some amazing magic with them so yeah 
That's pretty cool. Yeah, I've always yeah. wanted, like I said, my friend does something very similar and he he takes them and buys them cheap and then completely restores them. And yeah. every time you go over, he's got something, he's got a new one he's just finished or one he's just starting to work on. And yeah. I think it's great. So tell and me then, about the, um, or go ahead. No, okay. So tell, tell you about good. I cut you off oh. there. No, I was going to say, tell me about, um, you're talking about uh, the ride you guys have coming up for oh. the motorcycle. Well, Blue Sea has always been involved in, you know, we have a thing called Blue Sea Cares, which is caring for the community, caring for those in needs, and caring for those that are entering the industry through mentorship. And so we've always, throughout the years, is that we've always worked with, you know, the community and different events, um, supporting different events, both in providing creative, providing uh you know, employee support for the events, or as well as just being there and uh, being supportive of it. We also take care of several orphanages down in Mexico. Oh, wow. um, one of the ones that we're very involved in is Corazon de Vida, which takes care of ten orphanages. We've gone to the, we've been going to the orphanages years and years. I've I've been taking my kids down there since they were five. I threatened to leave them there when they were like seven <laughs> and eight. <laughs> um, and, and and then the other thing is is that mentorship is that I always. Um, I, we are very, very open to talk to schools, universities, uh, people, uh, high schools, of people that are interested in this industry, and we always, you know, provide support and all of that, um, and really try to help them create a roadmap to where they need to go. But the other thing is, is that we do is the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride every year, which is really cool because it's it's a motorcycle ride, and it's basically is is that um, it's for it's to generate funds for research of men's prostate cancer and men's mental health. And oh, wow. so this was actually created in Australia. And it was the, the whole idea is to have as many rides as, you can, as they can worldwide. So they have 700 rides. And like, so you'll, you'll look at the feed during the day. Is it all the same day? It's all on the same day. So wow. you look at the so you look at the Instagram feed, and it's like you'll see Barcelona, you'll see New Zealand, you'll see South Africa, you'll see Johannesburg, and it gets right down to the cities. You'll see, uh, you know, Iceland, uh, Argentina. Wow! And then, the United States has about fifty rides, and we're actually Orange County's fourth in the United States now. And so, what happens is is that we have a ride. Uh, all the men and women get dressed to the whole suit thing because the whole wow. gentleman, gentle girl thing. And, oh, wow. Um, then we do a ride, and we've actually, Blue Sea's been uh, helping organize the whole event for Orange County for the last five years. And so we're actually meeting on that this morning with our, our Blue Sea Breakfast Club at our office and trying to get that together. So That's fair. When's the next one? Next one's the last, last Sunday in September. So if you go to gentlemansride.com, you can check it out. Okay. And and so, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty, it's a really cool day. So basically as we started a destination and, you know, everyone hangs out actually like the month before is we do parties every week. And so it'd be like a, it would be a, a, a party at an event at a location. Then we do a pre-ride and then we do some kind of uh, destination ride where it's like everyone just ride to this restaurant, and go hang out. And then the next week we do the actual ride, which is, it's typically like 50 miles. And so it's, everyone brings out all their, all their latest and greatest motorcycles. And we don't yeah. limit it to anything. Um, Triumph is a big supporter of the event. Um, so, but you know, people will bring Harleys out. You'll see people in electric scooters. You'll see people wow. in, you know, it, you know all the all the metric bikes and you know everything from you know even the old school stuff you'll see some old nortons and old harley really? davidsons and old bsas wow. and kind of the whole thing so i mean it is the the true reality is, is that it is a photographer's mecca heaven because a yeah, you, got sounds bikes, like it. you got the location you got everyone dressed up and Whoa, are you still there? I lost you. What's happening? I'm here. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. The, I just the, like, the, completely the, the lost virus, you. The virus got us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds incredible, man. I think I may um, put come that on, on my schedule to come out there for that. Yeah, come on out. It's, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we do a coastal run. 
And so we're all, you know, basically it's like we try to do Pacific Coast Highway. And so it's just wide open Pacific Coast Highway. So Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, all right. I'm going to look into putting that on my schedule. All right. To make that happen for sure. Well, right, actually, last thing. Go actually, ahead. just in your area, you should just get involved in yours. And just to kind of tell you how funky this is, is every year I get like one or two new clients just from this. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, all right. And, and, and just even get funkier if you're a photographer is just find the ride. If you go to gentlemansride.com, you put in your city, it'll tell yeah. you the ride. Contact the organizer and just say, hey, can I shoot the photography for your event? You're going to shoot the photography. You're going to put your, your watermark on it, who you are yeah. on it. I will bet you, unless you really, really suck. <laughs> from it. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do that and then hope that I really, really don't suck. Don't really, 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 really don't suck. <laughs> really, really don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> if I really well, suck, we're... I'm probably okay as long as I really, really don't suck. There you go. Yeah. All right, last Good. question, Max. I know you got to go here in just a second. It's okay. What is the uh, strangest or most interesting thing that's happened to you since you've gotten into this business? Oh, you know what? It, it, it's kind of funny because one of the jokes I have with Jeff Bentley is that it's like something happens and we, we just go, okay, let's just, that's another chapter for the book. Oh, there's another chapter for the book. <laughs> there's another chapter for the book. What's the I strangest thing? There, there's been so many strange things. There has been like, there's been so many strange things. And you know, it's like, I, I even look at like the big agencies and like trying to figure out, you know, what is that? what is their magic sauce to get these big clients on board? And, and, you know, I, I, I reach out to, you know, usually like the, the C level people and, you know, try to try to have lunch or try to have breakfast or coffee with them. And they still have strange stories too. And I think this is the beauty of this industry and the worst part of this industry is that it's not a consistent way of getting business on it. And so strange stories, gosh, what is the strangest story? I mean, gosh, what is, I mean, from a new business standpoint or crazy things that just have happened? anything, man. Just, yeah. I mean, even if it's <sighs> you walking into work one day and God, oh, I'll tell you, I'll, well, I mean, we've had everything where our pipes have broken and flooded the whole place out. Um, <laughs> we, um, I think, I think that's one of the funniest stories that from a new business standpoint, because that's kind of from the operations and new business standpoint, that's where I really, I, I kind of land on that. In my, in my business on it is when we started the business is, um, Oh, here's a great story. Early, early days. Absolute vodka was one of our clients and it's not like the great stuff. It's not, I know you're going, God, it's like, I could do great photography for absolute. <laughs> Actually, what, it, what it was is a, a distributor promotion. And okay. And we really play well in that space um, as well is that the, the below the line stuff, the stuff that makes sales churn. Right. And so um, Absolute Vodka came to us and they were launching a new vodka flavored, um, flavored vodka. And so what it was is that we've got 50,000 boxes going out to all of their distributors, which are people that work out of their cars and go from right, location yeah. to location and take orders. And yeah. so we have 50,000 of these boxes to do this promotion is like, if you hit a certain amount of sales and you get this, you and your family get to go to our absolute sunshine San Diego event that we're doing, which was tied into another event and as a VIP experience and so forth. So we got 50,000 of these boxes and it had each of these boxes had not, this is a long time ago, but it each had a pair of sunglasses on it, had the in, information about the contest. And then it also had a little sample of the new flavored um, tequila or excuse me, vodka. It's too early. I'm starting to talk. To you. <laughs> and so, um, and so what happened is we work really hard and this is an early stage of blue sea and, worked really hard to get everything together is um, 
And so it's supposed to launch on the 2nd of January. So all these 50,000 boxes are supposed to go to the mail or they're supposed to deliver on the 2nd of January. So on the 23rd of December, we get a phone call from our client and he goes, Hey, there's a new law just passed. We can't, oh. you know, all those boxes that you're ready to go. And the cool thing is, it's like this, this, this thing, and I should have known better is this whole program went way too smooth is we had direct mail that launched before that we had other stuff that launched before that. Um, um, is, um, and then what happened is he goes, we can't do that. What we have to do is we have to empty all those bottles out mm. and we have, and put them in there. And what I want you to do is I want you to put, since it's San Diego, I want you to put San Diego sand in it. It's like, Oh my God. Seriously. Yeah, seriously. So, okay. Fi okay. Do the math. 50,000 wow. times two ounce bottles. Yeah. So, so basically we just got all these high school students paid them hourly to open up these bottles, pour them into sparklets, you know, five gallon jugs. Yeah. And then we had them all stacked out over the weekend, let them dry. And then they had came in on, on the weekend or the Monday. And this is during, during their spring or their, holiday break to filling a full of sand we got it out still but it's like oh my gosh so we had like all of these so how much of that vodka got re repurposed over into uh, other little yeah. bottles <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, the, you know that the high school students yeah. kept for themselves <laughs> i'm a, i'm afraid to ask but yeah. that, that's a, that that's that's a that's a crazy thing um wow man i mean i remember God. going to the women's world cup for one of our clients and um we're we have to, you know, we supported the whole marketing effort for the Women's World Cup in Chicago, and we got in the we got in this taxi to go back to our hotel room, and the taxi driver was crazy, and he was like, he was in a hurry to go somewhere, and we're flying through the city, and Chicago is kind of like the streets of San Francisco, where it's like hills and hills and hills and hills and hills, and so he's flying down, and and all of a sudden my my client just snaps and just gets in this yelling and screaming match to slow down. And, and as soon as he was going, he was telling them to slow down, the, the taxi driver's going faster and faster and they're getting angry. They're yelling at each other. And it's like, I remember just like driving down these hills, doing about 80 miles an hour in the city and the taxi lands on the ground, you know, oh falls down and all the sparks come up and I'm going, okay, we're dead. We're dead. <laughs> we're dead. I mean, it's, it's like things like that. I mean, there's, there's been so many, you know, there's wow. been so, so many crazy stuff. Well, those were both good. I enjoyed those. Yeah, you you can read them in my book though when you publish yeah, it. I can't wait for that to come out. Yeah. I'm definitely interested in hearing that. All right, man. I know you got to go, so uh, I'll wrap this up. Thank you guys for uh, listening, and if you like it, be sure and hit that little like button, subscribe to it, tell your friends about it, share this thing, and uh, tell everybody about behind the visual with uh, Mark Hansen. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks again, Eric. I appreciate you doing this. Time. Hey, thanks, Mark. All right. Right, Perfect. Yeah. Great. Bye. Perfect.